Alleluia! Christ is risen! Christ is risen indeed! Alleluia! Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are raised with him to new life. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you created us in your image and planted us in a well-watered garden. In the desert you promised pools of water for the parch, and you gave us water from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the good shepherd to lead us to still water. At the cross you watered us from Jesus' wounded side, and on this day you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through water, for water in this font, and for all water everywhere. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy the thirsty. Give us the life only you can give. To you be given honor and praise. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, and the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Holy Lord Jesus, on this day we rejoice in your glory and stand in awe of how you have transformed this world with your dying and your rising. Receive our joyful praise. Alleluia. Amen. Our first reading is from the Psalms. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good. God's mercy endures forever. Let Israel now declare, 
God's mercy endures forever. I give thanks to you, for you have answered me, and you have become my salvation. The stone that builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. But the Lord has this been done. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is a day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Hosanna, O Lord, save us. We pray to you, Lord, prosper our days. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God and has given us light. Form a procession with branches up to the corners of the altar. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome brought spices, so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man, dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. What changed? What changed with Jesus' resurrection? From Mark's Gospel, in some ways it doesn't seem like a whole lot changed. We are kind of left at the very end of his gospel with a picture of the women, the witnesses to the empty tomb, fleeing from that tomb in fear and in silence, with the lingering shadows of the dawn still around us. It doesn't seem like things have changed all that much in Mark's picture of the resurrection. And in some ways, things really haven't. In kind of an ironical twist, I think towards the end here of Mark's Gospel, we get the women who have witnessed the empty tomb, who have been told by the young man or the angel to go and tell the others. But Mark has them remaining quiet, telling no one anything. Unlike throughout the rest of his gospel, when people witnessed a miracle, Jesus would tell them not to say anything, and that didn't seem to slow them down very much. And so we still kind of have this sense that things are still running in opposition to the way God wanted them in the first place. And so we're kind of left I think at the end of Mark, with that lingering question, what changed? Out of all four of the Gospels, I suspect Mark's ending is probably the most disappointing. Not just to us, but throughout Christian tradition as well. In fact, several people along the way have tried to add an ending to this gospel, one that kind of summarized and had resurrection appearances to make it kind of more acceptable. But that's not the story. That's not the gospel that Mark tells. Instead, Mark ended his gospel with verse 8, 
with everybody leaving the tomb in fear. And on the one hand, that might be a disappointing ending. But I have to admit, out of the four Gospels, it is probably my favorite. And I think what sort of makes it my favorite is there is a deep sense of reality in Mark's ending. He understands that the resurrection, the story that he has been telling from the very beginning, that the resurrection sort of changes the world. And yet, he also seems to understand that our lived reality doesn't seem to always reflect sort of that change that has come about as a result of the resurrection. He is very good, I think, at the end of sort of allowing that paradox of the new age that began with Jesus' resurrection still not completely obliterating the old age that has been there since the Garden of Eden. Mark, perhaps better than the others, I think recognizes that tension. And that's a tension that we kind of live our lives in. And so in many ways, perhaps Mark's Gospel is the right one for this Easter. In the midst of a pandemic, why we are still social distancing, why we still can't even come together in person for worship, amid the anxiety and the fear that is largely still there within our society, wondering how these things can be happening. Mark's Gospel, I think, meets us there. It allows us to accept the world for what it is, that there is still much in this world that runs in direct opposition to what God really wants, to what God's hopes and dreams for all of us and for all of the cosmos truly are. But Mark's Gospel doesn't just end kind of on that sour note. Because Mark's Gospel also has a great sense of hope. Mark understands and has pointed out throughout his story that with Jesus' resurrection, a new age is in fact here. Things have changed. The tomb is empty. It is a new day. It doesn't mean the end of all that's in opposition to God, but it does mean things have changed. And in many ways, Mark is perhaps a literary genius. Because in the way that he ends that story, it essentially requires our participation in it. We are left wondering, how far did those women run? How long did they keep quiet? Did they ever tell Peter and the other disciples? And if they did, did Peter and the other disciples go to Galilee? Did they see Jesus? We are left with those questions, but we are also left with the very beginning of Mark's Gospel, in which we remember is just the beginning of the good news. And so that story of good news that Mark began is one that we now carry on into our lives over and over again. We become a part of the story. And that story may take us places that we never could have imagined. Who could have imagined even six weeks ago that we would find ourselves not gathering in person on Easter? And no matter where we might end up, Mark leaves us with the promise. With the promise that God's kingdom is, in fact, at hand and is here. The world has changed as a result of Jesus' resurrection. And that no matter where we go, 
no matter how our lives look, no matter where we find ourselves, we can rest assured that Jesus has already gone there before us, just like he did in Mark's story, where he met the disciples in Galilee. Christ has risen. The world has changed. Jesus is going before us, leading us. Amen. Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. 
For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of resurrection, from the very beginning you give the church the gift of women as your witnesses, as preachers, teachers, and leaders. Open our ears to their proclamation this day and always. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All your creation praises you. The earth hums, the seas pulse, the stars shine and the galaxies whirl in glorious harmonies to your honor. Let us hear and blend our voices in the song. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The countries of the world experience disunity and conflict. We set our minds on fear and greed rather than on your rule of justice and steadfast love. Build up all countries on your cornerstone of peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We still weep with those who weep and mourn with those who mourn. Cradle the fearful, the suffering, and the dying, assuring them of your loving presence. We especially ask your blessing upon the staff, residents of Mission 25, on all those who are working through the recovery in AA or NA, and all those that we name before you now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless the creative and helpful service of worship leaders this day, musicians, ushers, greeters, worship assistants, preachers, readers, and all others who provide welcome and hospitality in our midst. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Risen Lord, you went ahead of us into the grave and defeated the powers of evil. We remember those who have died. Inspire us to live our lives in this resurrection hope and draw us to you in our final days. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. During this time of offering, I would like to thank everyone who has sent in their offerings. We might not be able to gather in person but we have heard from many of you uh, and that you've been able to find some comfort, joy, and maybe even a little bit of respite uh, through our virtual worship services. And so we can continue to be church, even in this time of separation. We've also been able, by worshiping virtually, been able to be put onto an info channel of one of our local elderly care facilities where residents who, for their own safety and health, are essentially quarantined in the rooms, have the ability to watch this worship service. All of which is possible because of the work that we do together. So even in this time of separation, we are still being empowered by Jesus to participate in God's work with our community. And thank you for allowing that work 
to happen. Let us pray. Merciful God, our ordinary gifts seem small for such a celebration, but you make of them an abundance, just as you do with our lives. Feed us again at this table for service in your name and the strength of the risen Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Praise and thanks to you, holy God, for by your word you made all things. You spoke light into darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, brought life into being. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. By your word you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts, freedom from captivity, water on the desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life with you. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, you speak to us and call us to witness. Forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, the way of your self-given love. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Send your spirit of truth, O God. Rekindle your gifts within us. Renew our faith, increase our hope, and deepen our love for the sake of a world in need. Faithful to the, your word, O God. Draw near to all who call on you through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Gathered into one, even across distance, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead, raise you to new life, fill you with hope, turn your mourning into dancing, Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen.
Christ is risen, just as he said. Go in peace, share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.